Hello, everyone. Welcome to Elevate with V. I'm so excited to be here with you. This podcast was inspired by my own healing journey. I aspire to share amazing healers and coaches, and I love to have everyone have an opportunity to elevate on their journey so that we can keep aligning with our soul's calling and gifts. I can't wait to introduce my guest today, Kevin. He and I met through his private Facebook group called the Lightworkers Exchange. It's been a delight to join him and his wife, Suzanne. Do check out her episode. That was number 19. We have a beautiful and supportive set of conversations and exchanges, and it's truly a joy to be able to join them and the community. And I know that Whenever I join them, I'm always leaving feeling very uplifted and elevated. So that's really beautiful. And so uh, the formal introduction for Kevin, he is an intuitive coach who assists those moving through challenges to regain confidence, clarity, and direction using spiritual alignment techniques. Results often include increased presence, deeper intuitive guidance, receiving messages from the non-physical, and channeling. Kevin has been credentialed, credentialed <laughs> by the International Coach Federation at the PCC level and also implements the teachings of Abraham, Bashar, Cryon, and many other seasoned channels in his work with clients. Welcome, Kevin. Thank you for having me, Vanita. It's a true pleasure to be here. And thank you for the work that you do for our community. This is, I think, very important to get our our information out so that more people can be uplifted in following their own journeys. Thank you so much, Kevin. It's really been so amazing to uh, be part of your group and get to know you, get to know Suzanne and everybody else in that group. It's just such a beautiful space. And I would like to make it every week. It doesn't always happen, but uh, it is, it's lovely to, to be part of it. So thank you for that. And uh, as you know, this show is all about healing journeys. So um, how we've each navigated to kind of get to the silver linings. We also know that the healing journey is continuous. Technically, it's never like done, as they say. <laughs> no, it isn't. <laughs> uh, but I wanted to ask you what event or events led you to stepping into your own healing journey? Hmm. Well, um, it was 15 years ago that uh, I was in the IT business. I have had uh, technical uh, jobs my whole life. My career started in 1980 as a software developer and then eventually moved into IT and I started a business. And then uh, in 2008, I got married to Suzanne in 2007 and 2008, um, coming home from a uh, client appointment in the fall, um, my face went numb. It just kind of got cold on the right side. And I thought, well, it's maybe it's the weather and it went away. But then when it came back, I went and saw a doctor our local holistic doctor. And he said, you got to see a neurologist pretty much right away, <clears throat> which I did. And the neurologist said, did a few tests. And he said, no, you got to get an MRI. And then got an MRI and uh, they found a, uh, a non-cancerous uh, cystic brain tumor about that big uh, sitting on my balance nerve. There's uh, three nerves that go behind the ear into the brain stem. There's the hearing, the balance, and the uh, facial nerve. And this one was on the balance nerve, but it was pushing against the facial nerve. And so I was starting to lose sensation here. <clears throat> and so we went and, and saw um, the experts. And the first guy we saw was, um, I like to say he, his head was so big, he could not hardly fit through the door. <laughs> he, he was very much uh, into himself and showed us uh, the invention he had made like in 1972 or something that, that helped in the surgeries for this kind of tumor. Cause it's very rare one in 2000 cases every year, something like that. Uh, and so he was on the leading edge of this, but I mean, he just couldn't talk enough about himself. And after a while, it was just, it was really, you know, it's like, you're not the guy, but since it was a, uh, it was non-cancerous and it was slow growing, it was just a cyst that was slowly building up. And I'll explain a little bit more about the energy behind that in a minute. Um, we put it off and I decided to do some uh, healing modalities, alternatives such as hypnotherapy, for instance, read books like Louise Hayes, uh, You Can Heal Your Life, which had, had a lot of information. I know you are familiar with that book and diagnoses the, uh, the emotional cause behind a, a tumor. And the tumor itself, because it was located in the brain, well, a tumor is a buildup of 
resentment and uh, a shock to the system and then playing the old story over and over and over again, the, the uh, powerless victim energy, which I, I had a, an abundance of at that time. My dad had it and, you know, it was just, it, you know, passed down <laughs> through, uh, you know, father to son kind of thing. The chain of pain, as Abraham likes to call it. And so the, the, so it was just literally building up there. It was just a place for it to de be deposited. And the fact that it was in the brain, the brain is called the computer of the body. And of course, I had been a computer guy for, you know, at that point, 30 years or something. <clears throat> so it's not a surprise where it was and what it was uh, in my body. I didn't know that at the time. I, I didn't know anything about any of this kind of stuff. I had, I had received that book years earlier from a friend whose life it had saved, and I never read it, just put it on the shelf. <laughs> you know, I know this stuff <laughs> till you don't. So then I read it. And interestingly, Suzanne, we were reading Suzanne's copy because I didn't even know where mine was, and she already had that. And, and we were laying in bed once chatting about this, just kind of uh, before, you know, lights out. And, and, I said, yeah, I should get another one. You know, yours is all marked up and it's, you've got your stuff and I should get my own. And, and, uh, so we looked over at the bookshelf in the end of the room, the end of the bed there on the wall. And there's the book, my book from 15 years ago, <laughs> just staring back at me saying, <laughs> I'm ready to be read now. And so I did read it and it helped me to start to understand all what was going on. But what was interesting is that in, uh, 2008 September is when this was diagnosed. And when we were on our way to our honeymoon first, our belated honeymoon first year anniversary, because we didn't really take one in October of 2008, that's when we were really getting started. Somebody handed my wife to Abraham CDs. And we, I had never heard of Abraham and she kind of knew about it. She's a lot more spiritual at that time than I was. And, you know, I didn't really want to have much to do with it, but we were going to be five hours in the car going to Niagara Falls. So, of course, you know, put the CD in and listen to the workshop. And I'm, I'm trying to figure out how they do this. You know, what's going on? Where's the man behind the curtain? You know, fill it, pulling the levers and stuff. And in those workshops, as you know, Esther is channeling Abraham, the collective consciousness on stage and brings up people to ask questions and answer. And then Abraham answers and they have a dialogue. And it, it seemed to be very effective for the people. But the things that I noticed were that the Abraham conversations were always gentle. There was no, you could never feel, I'm very sensitive to energy. My dad was a very angry guy. So, you know, I'm the walking on eggshells. I'm very sensitive to, to when people are heading down in that negative condescending energy. And there was none of that. Well, I like that, you know. And then the answers that came out seemed to be right on spot on, spot on for the person who was listening, uh, asking the question. I thought, well, that's good. And then over time, I noticed there was no discrepancy in the messages. Like they were all the same. Like it was always the same thing. You, you're a vibrational being. You create your own reality. Your emotions tell you how good a job you're doing for yourself. And you can't create in somebody else's reality. It's all about you and you're not doing anything wrong. And, and let's just have a better journey now. I thought, well, that's cool. So that whole year we started studying Abraham from 2008 to 2009. In, in the summer of 2009, we went to our first Abraham workshop before the surgery, and that was in um, Chicago, which is another five hours in the opposite direction from here. And I couldn't, I could not, um, I was getting headaches now because this thing's pressing against my brain stem, and it was just not very comfortable. And I finally had gotten to the point where I, I'm, I'm going to have the surgery. And uh, I can't remember, <laughs> excuse me, it was right in that time period where um, I finally decided, okay, no more pushing against because I was going to lose my hearing and my balance. Or, you know, they're going to pull all that out. And I didn't want that, but I've got to have this. I'm going to, I'm going to die basically. So I had, I had said, okay, I'd surrendered to it. Finally, as Abraham says, you, when you let go of the resistance, everything can start flowing. And in two weeks or so, a friend of ours said, oh yeah, I know somebody who had that surgery, you know, one in 2000 in the world that year. And he ha happens to live, yeah, 30 minutes from us. So I, I, I had a conversation and they said, yeah, it's the, one of the two places that does all these surgeries is like 30 minutes from our house, Providence Hospital. The other place was in California. We were going to have to fly to California and put us up in, you know, hotels and all that stuff. And not only that, but they had moved the, their, uh, their medical uh, neurology center to the Novi Providence Hospital, which is 10 minutes from our house. 
all brand new equipment, state of the art, like all the seasoned doctors. And, and so this lady then introduced us to her doctor and her doctor is just this great guy. And he had a great staff, perfect demeanor and everything was perfect. So that was my first law of attraction, real experience. And then, so the Abraham workshop then, uh, which was a little while later, um, I remember sitting in the audience and I wanted to ask the question, you know, how to get rid of this tumor. And, but I, I didn't get called on. Turns out there was another lady whose son had a brain tumor and he was, <laughs> she was called in. So I got a bit there. And then there was another lady about had some other thing. And when she went up and it had nothing to do with brain tumors, just pain. And I saw these words over Abraham, over Esther's head as she was channeling in your pain, you must remain in hopefulness. It was like gold letters. Like I just, I'd never seen a vision like that before. And I got it. I mean, I'm starting to get it. Even when you're in your pain, you have to let the can't let the emotions dive into the pain because that's what started it. You got to get the emotions back up here, and then the rest can follow. And we can, we'll talk a lot about that, I'm sure, during our extended conversation. And then I also actually saw the Abraham Collective. I saw a cloud of beings over Esther's head. It was just like all these clouds, but all these sort of faces, kind of blurry. And that was that kind of got me going uh, like it's like okay this is you know when you have your own experience this is the real deal like there's i can't i can't doubt this anymore because i am now experiencing this so everything kind of flew together very quickly i i put together a little recording from asking it is given which is one of esther's books about healing the body and uh, i played that recording 30 days before the surgery and i went through surgery in september 2009 and uh, everything went fine i was like for brain surgery, particularly removing a balance nerve, typically people can't get out of bed for six weeks because they've lost their balance. But my balance had already been lost because of the pressure. And so I was out of bed in the next day or so. And after having, you know, had my head opened up and, you know, stuff pulled out. So the healing energy from listening to the Abraham's words about your body and, and how it easily repairs itself and so forth, all the, the details made a big difference. And so then my healing journey, my physical healing journey then started at that point. And one little thing about that, that I was really worried about, because I was self-employed at the time doing, I had an IT business with some contractors, but it was just mostly me, that uh, my, where's my business going to go? I, I got a month, I got a recovery, there's no income coming in. And I was all worried about that. And in about three months though, after going back, my business had doubled. So again, letting go of the, the fear and the worry and the stress and just trusting the universe, getting this thing all worked out. This has all got a meaning, a purpose, and it's all going to be positive if I just get out of the way. Uh, it all happened. And then that was sort of the, that story was the, the pivotal point that I couldn't, I couldn't ignore anymore. And so then the journey has been, now that I was on board, now I'm, you know, I'm driving the car <laughs> instead of being pushed around by it. <laughs> Wow. Wow. That is quite profound. Um, and, you know, there's so many things in here. It's like, where do I go first? But <laughs> <laughs> um, I would love to ask, I know that you're sharing about like Abraham Hicks. Now, I know a lot of people would have heard of law of attraction. Um, do you mind just sharing a little bit? And then we'll kind of jump back into your story, if you don't sure. mind. Not at all. So my understanding, so it, ta it takes a couple of pieces to put the puzzle together. Abraham is a, a collective consciousness of teachers, they call themselves, that Esther Hicks, when she goes into a, a trance-like state, she literally puts her mind off to the side, then can open up to and receive blocks of thought from this non-physical, we call it consciousness, non-physical simply being not within, contained within the third dimension. There's many more dimensions beyond the third. And so consciousness, higher consciousness lives in that multidimensional space, and, but we can connect to it. And but most people don't do that because their, their brains are so loud that they don't hear that still small voice of God, as the Bible calls it, or that, that guidance, which is always there. But Esther, over a period of time, learned how to, to quiet her mind through meditation and finally get her mind enough out of the way that she started receiving those impulses and her subconscious translates it into words. And so that's kind of the essence of what they call uh, channeling. And we all have this ability and we're all channeling at least a tiny bit every day, but we don't call it that because usually there's not enough of it to really discern. You know, we have a good moment 
in one moment uh, during the day and you think, oh, that was a lucky thing that just happened. And no, you let go of that noisy brain for a moment and you got an impulse that came through the broader part of you. Because the broader consciousness, if you think about it, if you're in a higher dimension, then you can literally see every place into the third dimension. There's nothing that's un as covered or hidden. And so this other part of us, which is kind of the real version of us, the pure ver version of us, can see all paths and it knows us because it is us and it wants to guide us towards all the things that will feel good for us. And it's constantly sending us messages to help. And we're usually not listening. And so the process then is how do you clear the mind out and start tuning into that frequency? I, I liken it simply to a radio. When you know it doesn't matter where in the city you go with your radio, you turn to the jazz station and jazz comes out. It's like it doesn't matter where you are because it's a frequency, it's not a location. It's not a perfect analogy, but it's pretty close to the way it seems to work with the, the non-physical consciousness, which is always here in, in loving support. It doesn't matter where we are <clears throat> when we open up and quiet this mind, then there it is. And it's always sending us guidance. And so that's kind of the essence of channeling and what Esther does. There's lots of people now. She's been doing this 35, almost 40 years, I think, as have a number of other people who kind of started this modern um, trend, as it were. But everybody can channel and widen that channel and get more, a more clear stream of, of uh, consciousness. So that's the, uh, that's the, connecting piece that is the guiding piece so to speak it, and then the the one law of this physical universe physical and non-physical this specific universe i guess there are many other ones and this one is that vibrations or frequencies and everything is vibrating energy at some level you can go into quantum physics to learn more about that if you <laughs> i want to beat yourself up it's, i've been doing it a long time and it's a it's a hard thing sometimes to get, but basically the idea is everything is vibrating energy and consciousness, we get to choose the vibration, the frequency based on where we're focused. And that frequency that's going out that we're vibrating at, literally the rest of the universe around us will respond at that frequency. And it literally mirrors back that frequency. And we call this in a third dimensional sense, law of attraction, which just means that whatever frequency you're at is the frequency you're going to experience. Your perception will see only things in that frequency and literally things will come closer to us and our intuitive stream, because we're on the same frequency, will send us impulses to go towards those things which match. So we like to say we're being guided towards the things that are being guided towards us. We rendezvous at that frequency. And how do you know what frequency you're on? your emotions. This solar plexus gadget right here, which people call either the heart center or the gut, uh, is the solar plexus is actually the organ that feels the emotions. It's kind of all in the same area, so you can call it whatever you want. But that solar plexus, <laughs> excuse me, is a cluster of nerves, a, a plexus of nerves, which is a matrix of brain-like cells, which pick up the vibrational frequency variants. And so as we're shifting around during our day and our thoughts, going up and down in our emotions, it's the one that's telling us the frequency that we're on. We're going up or we're going down, we're going happier, sadder, and joyful, fearful, and so forth. And it's the one that's telling us this is what you're doing. Otherwise, we'd have no idea of the quality of our thoughts. We wouldn't experience fear or joy, and we'd just be banging all over the place, and we'd have no guidance or direction. So it's really important to first tune in to feelings and the whole body really is the emotional sensor, but the solar plexus is the, the center of it, the core of it. Tune in and then as you're thinking, feel what you're thinking. And then from that, then you can guide yourself towards better feeling thoughts. And then the universe itself, which is reflecting these vibrations will start to reflect the vibrations if you're doing it intentionally, most people are not. But the yeah, whole point and what I coach people around is the whole journey of unpacking the negative emotions and the traumas that we experience as children and moving through those, not avoiding them, but moving through them if they're present so that we can then start to deliberately tune the frequency to where we want it to be so that then not only will we feel good, because that's the number one thing, we're here to experience joy. You know, it doesn't need, you don't need the outside to experience joy, that's a choice, but uh, once we do, then the outside world starts to reflect joyful experiences, and then it becomes heaven on earth. Wow. 
That was such an amazing explanation, Kevin. I love that so much. Thank you. Because I think what's beautiful about the way you shared it, now when we go back to what you had shared about you, what you were going through, it allows people to kind of understand kind of more of like, as you were kind of, you know, kind of in some sense, kind of binge watching and <laughs> connecting to like Abraham Hicks. And, you know, it's beautiful because it is so synchronistic with everything that you were going through, whether you were conscious or not conscious right. when you were early on. It's like, if you listen to the story that you were sharing, I was like, everything was kind of lining up. And the more you kind of surrendered or allowed, the more things would show up in your field. Like, I mean, people would be like, oh my God, what a coincidence, really? Like that <laughs> happened? How could that happen, you know? And we don't even realize that we're actually creating these things, right? Yes. And it's like this co-creation with the universe, with the energies. And um, so I just love that you shared that. So, and I truly believe what you were saying about everything lining up the way that it did, like your healing journey from the physical surgery was probably like leaps faster than most other people that might have had the same surgery, which you said, it's very rare. There's a very small number of people that actually have this particular scenario yeah. um, This and the surgery. But, you know, I think it just kind of all lined up perfectly. I mean, yes. you created it. It was just like how much you knew you were actually part of that creation. <laughs> right. And, and then the cool thing is that I didn't have to know how much yes. at that time. All I had to do is find relief and let go of the this attachment I had to victimhood and resentment. And in that, everything else took care of itself. And that's the magic pill here. What was interesting, I was just thinking about this as you said it, after I had the surgery, um, I think that's my dentist maybe, who's a really great guy, he understands all of this um, uh, concept. Uh, he referred me, he said, I have another client who actually had the same surgery as you did. and." Uh, you know, you'd be, she's actually in a little support group if you'd be interested. And I said, okay, well, I, I'm interested in exploring it. And so I reached out to her and man, did, has she not moved forward? And so this is a really, uh, this is a, a linchpin in terms of healing permanently from something. You have to let go of the vibration which created the illness in order for the illness not to return. And that's why doctors can't always get, you know, they have a recidivism rate of so much or, you know, 70% will heal, but 30% won't. And we don't know why. Well, the reason is because those 30% didn't do the work. They didn't take the, the emotional interrupt that the illness was supposed to cause and stop thinking the negative thoughts, which created the illness in the first place and get, give themselves relief and shift back up the emotional scale. When you understand that one piece, then everything is healable and and you and i know our society is going to get to the point where we don't require surgery or pills or uh, procedures anymore or at least most won't there's nothing wrong with the contrast and we'll probably want to talk about that as well at some point but the i have a client right now who i've had for four weeks she was diagnosed four weeks ago with double breast cancer and they scheduled, they said, and she's in Sweden, they said, you've got to get in like right away. And so she had like three weeks to make plans. And she knew of me, she was in our group. And she said, for some reason, I know Kevin's going to help me on this journey. And so she contacted me like that day. <laughs> and we had some amazing sessions. I do guided meditations, which are apparently channeled. And she was ready to go. She's ready to let go of things, didn't know how. And that's where I help people. And so I stepped into uh, my support state and she started then releasing things and doing the work. And, and uh, she, if we had had three months instead of three weeks, basically together, I suspect she would not have needed surgery because actually a week before she had them recheck the tumors and one of them had shrunk by, I don't know, 10% or 7% or something. So, I mean, it's just, it's literally, it's just simple mechanics. The, the intensity of the vibration, how low it is on the scale, it's got to manifest someplace and the body is the first place. So. Wow. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. And I think that's the thing is that we, let alone us having the awareness, I mean, traditional medicine is not 
at all making that connection. They're just looking at the physical versus that huge piece. It's the emotional that is actually created. It's everything. In the body. And if you don't get to the core, like I'm just saying that there are probably people that get surgeries and things, but that stuff comes back because they haven't actually done the work to clear the actual root problem. Yes, they didn't know to. They no. didn't know to. They just don't have the awareness. Yeah. And, you know, part of this, and, you know, I just wanted to mention this is, some people don't want to heal. They choose not to heal because they're getting something out right. of that situation. So that's another scenario that yeah. is kind of interesting because they have this story and they're so attached to the story and they don't want to release the story because they're getting things out of it, whatever that is, right? Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's another aspect where you're like, okay, this is also true. Now, the truth is we have all done this because- Anything that we have experienced, it's probably we're getting clues and we're not paying attention, not aware, and then oh, it keeps yeah. manifesting and then it takes a certain form. You're like, well, where did this happen from? Where did this come from? Well, that's so, no, that's a great, uh, it's another component of this, which is really important. I'm glad you you brought it up. So the the obvious question is, well, if my emotions are telling me what's going on in my body, then um, I was feeling good. And then they diagnosed me with cancer. It's like, well, what's up with that? Well, so what is happening with that is that we've learned to numb ourselves to our emotions. I was in my head most of my life because it was when my dad would scream uncontrollably for something, I had immediately think anything I could do to get out of the, his way. And if he was in my way, then I had to suck the energy out of the room so he would calm down. And that's, I think, where my coaching started, actually. <laughs> like, you quickly, you get a line, like, give me some words here. <laughs> and, and it, you know, worked. But then I would take it in, internally. And it was so emotionally painful as a child that um, I eventually just, you just numb this. Just like going into shock for the body. If you have a tra trauma in the body, uh, you know, the body just literally turns that part off for a while so that you can survive and get to, to healing, to help. And so we do that emotionally as well. And so we all have layers of numbness in us, things that we've, concepts, ideas, experiences that we have literally stuffed below the emotional radar so we, we can't feel them. Now they'll come up if we get a trigger and then we get really angry at somebody for what they did or what they said. Well, that's this thing in us coming up saying, ready to heal, <laughs> ready to heal. <laughs> it's like, no, 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 it's their fault. Then we push it right back down again. And so there's this, we have these thresholds of, of tolerance, of emotional pain that are at different levels. And so we are getting a message. We're having a negative thought. The emotions are being generated. Say, that's not the best direction. Let's see if we can change the thought. But we can't hear it. We literally, it doesn't come into our purview, into our, into our perception at that time. So a part of the work is to become more aware of how you feel. And I, and I like, I, this, ha this was a big shift for me when I, cause I've had lots and lots of channeling sessions, which where I've connected in or had people connect in and they give me tons of guidance. That's why I can talk so fluidly on this. I've had great help is tune into the body. They said, you spend so much time in your head that you are not, not only not receiving the messages, but you're not feeling the body, which is telling you the quality of your thoughts. And so they said, just move your direct, your attention down into your body. Just direct it down to the body. Just feel into the body, feel the lungs, feel the, the blood, feel the, the muscles, feel the energy in the body. And then, then you start to become a little more conscious of what's going on in there. It's one of the things I do with my clients, um, almost all of them, because the, they're doing this kind of work, they've all had trauma of some sort, and they had pains in their bodies or diseases that'll show up. And, and we can move the attention down into the body and, and sometimes in a minute, as long as they don't start engaging in the negative story and spin themselves off in a you know, a tirade someplace, then they'll start to feel and, and the pain will go away. Like this happens all the time in calls now. And I, I do it myself. I don't take pain pills or allergy pills or gas, any of that kind of stuff anymore, except under extreme circumstances where I'm really out of alignment because I want that feedback. My body starts to not feel pretty good in, in some area. If I start to get a little pain in my side or a, you know, a sniffle or something, that's an emotion that I was ignoring. So I want to know what that is so that I can then come back into alignment. And you don't even really have to know what it is, but just, okay, you're not taking time for yourself. You're not relaxing. You're not tuning into the body. So that's kind of the, the whole mechanism. So to your point, just kind of summarize the, the, the way we make this work is we start to feel again. And there's a lot of road bumps in that. And that's 
again, a lot of what the work I do is to help people gently move over the, the road bumps and, and trust that when that comes up, it's not going to kill them because it was stuffed down for a reason. I love that. Wow. That is really powerful. So in your experience with all of your clients, like you said, like, let's just take this example, like there are all these different pains or things stored in the body and you're working with them and you're helping them. And in that moment, there's a release, there's a shift. Um, is part of the work that they have to kind of maintain that thought process. Otherwise it's going to come back. Well, it's, it's a, kind of the opposite. <laughs> I mean, you're right on track. You're looking at it from a different angle. It's kind of yeah. the same thing. So um, pain in the body is just recognizing that it's there and, and sitting with it. Because when you sit with it for even 60 seconds, sometimes less than that, then what you're, what you're doing is giving it, you're, you're giving it the stage to, to, to be heard to be felt. And then in that moment, if you really do, and usually tears will, will come along at the same time. And the, the reason is because that painful thing is coming up to the surface to be re released, but there's a tendency to push it back down again, right? And this is a very delicate time, but what tears do in the body, the crying is actually, it disrupts the thinking process. That's what crying does. So we can't remember, oh yeah, I was thinking really bad thoughts about my mom who did this thing to me and, and we stuff it back down again, you know? It's just, no, I'm going to feel it. And then, and so the, the crying then interrupts us pushing it back down. And then once we fully felt it, and again, 60 seconds, sometimes less, that layer is gone. So no, there's no going back to that specific layer. There are many more that will come up, different scenarios and different experiences, you know, that we have all through our childhood and early adulthood. But that one thing is healed. And then you will literally feel a little bit lighter in that moment. And whatever, wherever that was being reflected in the body, and just a, a minor, minor adjustment to what you said about being stored in the body, it's being reflected in the body. The thought process is the, the origin. The vibration is the origin of the creation of physicality. And so nothing is stored in the body, but it's reflected chronically in the body because we have chronic beliefs around it that are unhealed. And so they keep causing the, the issue to stay put. So you release the, the belief system, I'm unworthy, I'm no good, I'm unlovable, whatever it is in that scenario. And then suddenly that part of the body is not being held down and it just heals and comes back online. Ooh, I love that. So let's kind of, so, but it, it, it's taking physical form. So if you have like cancer or you had the tumor, is it because it's just over time, like we just haven't had the awareness and haven't tuned in? So it's just like, okay, well, I'll just keep, you know, growing and doing my thing until you pay attention. I'll keep reflecting larger and larger until you get the message. So here's a, here's something that'll help that too, because these are brilliant questions, by the way. Thank you for for this. And I, I couldn't bring this out without your curiosity and your questions. So I, I appreciate that. Thank you, Kevin. So it, it starts with a thought. Thought is a vibration. And yeah, that's close enough. So you're sending out a vibration and you're getting an emotional response. Pluck a guitar string, you hear a sound, right? You don't hear a sound without plucking the guitar string. So you don't feel an emotion without a thought. Thought emotion, thought emotion. Emotion tells you the quality of the thought. So at all times, if we're completely tuned in, which is admittedly difficult to do, then we would never vary our thoughts from anything that brought us pure joy, love, appreciation, freedom, right? We'd, we'd start to feel it in the moment. So we have this little tiny emotional variance, like ah, I'm starting to drop just a tiny bit. It's like, okay, go back. Like, so in a perfect world where we had no numbing of our experiences, that's how we would live. We'd live right up here, heaven on earth, right? But that's all, it's also not why we came. There's value in the contrast. But so, so you ignore the emotion and you keep thinking the negative thought. Well, law of attraction, about 15 seconds, will start to bring you more that matches that thought. The lower frequency, you're down here maybe in worry. And can you keep worrying 15 seconds? You'll get more thoughts that match worry. And so the emotion gets larger. You start feeling really a lot of worry. And then you start dropping down the emotional scan. It gets larger. And you still don't do anything. Eventually, in about 60 seconds, you start to attract physical things that will start that will match worry. And the first place is typically the body because it's the closest thing to the brain. Right? This is a thing you carry it with you everywhere you go. So it doesn't get much relief 
if you're thinking these worrisome thoughts. And if you don't do anything about the worrisome reflection in the body, then don't worry, it'll get worse because the momentum will not stop until you stop sending out the signal that says, bring me more of this frequency that I'm sending out. And so ultimately that then interferes with the cell's abilities to communicate with each other. Each cell has a little inner being that it gets guidance from as well. And the body is purely intuitive. You know, a person who's in a coma for 20 years is in perfect health. They don't develop cancer. It's because they're not thinking. They just die of old age or they wake up. Right? It's because there's no, there's no activity to counter that. So, so the cells then start, they can't communicate with each other because there's this loud energy that's overriding them, just like the brain's overriding our guidance. And so they start to, to, to just do the best they can and try to adapt based on what they can't hear and what's around them. And they stop communicating properly. And some of them grow way out of control because they don't have regulation systems. We call that cancer, right? And, and so on and so on and so on. And where they show up in the body is reflective of the kind of thought that it is. Like, like things in, in the back typically and shoulders mean I feel like uh, things are on my shoulders. I have big weight on my shoulders. Hey, you, you look through the Louise Hay book and it's remarkable. You get things in the legs because you're not moving forward in life. And they're always accurate. This is how intelligent things are. So you can see that journey it gets louder and louder and louder and louder until it either kills you or you get the message. <laughs> and then you stop thinking the thought. Or you address, address it. Uh, and, and in the bigger picture, it doesn't matter which happens. We're on an eternal journey of exploration, diving into the depths of contrast to come out and in the process of coming out, remembering who we really are, we get new ideas that have never been thought of before, new ways of looking at things, new levels of love and compassion and joy and freedom that have never been experienced unto the universe before in this specific situation. And thus the universe expands. So this is all by design. It's no accident we're here doing what we're doing in this deep way. We just don't look at it like that usually. It's so true. Oh my gosh, I love that so much. And since you brought it up and you mentioned it, let's dive in into the wonderful world of contrast too. Why not? Sure, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, this is a harder one for people. <clears throat> I mean, a lot of this can be hard for people, but the, the idea that I'm creating my own reality and, and it's not the one I want, it's like it's well, there's so much um, judgment in our society of you're doing it right or you're doing it wrong. It starts in childhood. Religions have it as a way to control the populace, the people who are coming. Uh, marketing does it. Businesses often do it. Government does it. School system does it. You know, here's a small group of people that said, here's what our children need to learn because we think so. And so now all these diverse children get stuffed in these little boxes called classrooms and force fed things that don't necessarily align with them in those moments. And so we kind of adapt to that, those experiences, and then we start to break from our own alignment, our own guided alignment. And there's a whole story, our whole conversation around that. But so then you think, okay, well, that's, so if I created this negative thing, I mean, I, I can't have created this negative thing. Somebody else must have done it. So, so then we're all out of alignment about it. But in the process, we're going through this journey of expansion. Every time you have a moment of relief, you've expanded. And so stepping back, let's, let's step back a little farther. So expansion occurs in this particular universe when we identify something we don't want, when you know what you do want, you know what you don't want, you know what you don't want, you know what you do want. Usually we know what we don't want in a given moment. In that moment, what we do want also is present. That's a little hard to explain, but literally when we have an awareness of something, we have created the solution that we want in that moment, but usually we're focused on the lack of it. And so we dwell there, this thing's not here, it's not here, it's not here. Energetically, that thought's already in existence. Our inner being watching hears it, realizes it, thinks about it, the inner being, being multidimensional, can think about all things at once. And so it's thinking about all the things that we've desired since we were born, and even before that, really, sending those energies out. And in that moment, those new things, that the result of the negative experience are created. The universe has already expanded. So the, the unwanted wanted, the idea of variety and being able to choose from wanted and unwanted is what allows this universe to expand. It's the exploration part. And so that we call contrast. Contrast is just the difference between dark and light, negative and, and positive, wanted and unwanted. And our, this is a dualistic universe that we live in, and that's the nature of the universe and how it expands. 
is from that those contrasting experiences where we find what we don't want. But the human, because we have this, this intense thinking brain, which gets stuck, gets hooked really easy on momentum, doesn't realize law of attractions in process, then starts to dwell on the negative, tries to solve the problem because that's what we're taught, and thus immerses themselves even more in the negative experience and then creates these big old negative things. I'm doing my best. I know, I'm trying to figure it out. I got all this help trying to figure it out. We can't figure it out. We just keep throwing fuel on the fire of negative energy. When all we really need to do is identify that something unwanted has just uh, shown up. Our emotions tell us that. Let it go. Walk away for a, a little bit. Get back into alignment. And when we do that, we're now in proximity frequency-wise of that solution. And now those impulses can come through on the radio station because we moved up to the radio station where the solution already exists. And it'll start guiding us towards the things that will bring the positive side, the wanted side of the negative thing. No problem solving needed. That's an illusion. Problem solving occurs when people who are focusing on problems stop focusing on the problems. In that moment where they go get a coffee, the idea comes. It's not when they're, they're enmeshed in the, in the negative energy. You've got to get out of the negative energy to receive the answer. But they think that was the problem solving that caused it. I was an engineer for many years, and I, I spent most of my life looking for problems to solve or solving existing problems. And it's, it's fun when you get that answer, that little burst of positive energy comes through, but the whole process is pretty negative overall. So the contrast is what, to answer your question, the contrast is what allows the universe to expand. It's already expanding in each moment that we identify something we don't want. And if we want to enjoy the expansion, our job is to get off the negative thing as soon as possible and come back into alignment so we ourselves in the physical body can experience the joyful thing that we ourselves have created. Oh, I love that so much, Kevin. So while you were talking, the example that was coming back is from something that you shared. Mm -hmm. um, because when you went through your surgery, you're like, oh my gosh, what am I going to do? I, you know, there was some sense of like fear and lack. And you're like, yeah. what am I going to do? And then on the other side, you also said, oh, suddenly my business was like booming. So tell us how this played out exactly from the conversation that we just had. Yeah, that, that's great. That's absolutely great. And actually, I think the process of release started back when we found the doctor and then went to the Abraham workshop in that summer, like that, those were like their, their pivotal moments, which kind of started the, the releasing process. Uh, and it's a long journey. I've been that way my whole life. So it's, it doesn't happen just in one experience. <clears throat> but so after the surgery, I couldn't do anything. I couldn't drive for like a month. I think it was, I don't remember exactly how long it was. I had a big bandaid on my head. So I'm basically bouncing around the house, you know, going crazy pretty much. But a lot of things happened. I listened to lots of Abraham in, in those moments, reminding me that it's okay. You haven't done anything wrong. This is your creation and everything exciting is, is creatable now as a result of the contrast. And I remember one specific experience, which actually might be a pivotal point as well. I had a vision board. We had actually taught, we, we had done law of attraction workshops and I had taught a uh, vision board workshop with my wife, with Suzanne. And you, know, you put all the things that you don't have, but you want on the vision board. And I didn't know much about them. I just knew what other people had done. You see the movie, The Secret, they, I got a $5 million house. And I just, cause it was on a vision board. Hey, I want a $5 million house. <laughs> right? So you put all these things you don't have on the vision board. And I, and this dusty old vision board been sitting in my bedroom for months and probably, probably a year or more. And, and as I'm bouncing around the house going crazy, I, I came across that thing and I looked at it and I just had this awareness, like, this is a reminder of all the things I don't have. Like, why do I want to focus on that? <laughs> and I just tore the thing to shreds. <laughs> like, I don't need to do this. That feels terrible. And it, it's, it felt so good. Like, it was a major point of release. And I think there were other minor components in there. You know, you spend enough time with yourself and you know, then things start to come up and you start to find the relief. I didn't, I didn't have the constant drone of computer work to focus on that was keeping, preventing me from feeling, right? I had to go up on my head to, to address these things. And, and so I think it was a, a combination of steps that I didn't realize I was doing until as your great question here allows me to reflect back that this in fact was, was going on. And 
once you get a taste of it, this is what I tell people, you got to prove this stuff to yourself. I can, I can talk all day on it, but until you're willing to actually start paying attention to how you're feeling and judging and ju adjusting your thoughts and then observing the results, you know, nobody can tell you how it works. I mean, nobody can make it happen for you. you you've got to go through the experience. And so as I was releasing, I think then I started seeing evidence. People were showing up. I had a lot of wonderful friends and support. Some place I worked was contracting to was very helpful. They sent me flowers. And so I had all these little positive confirmations kind of come in. And uh, yeah, so it wasn't one thing in this case. It was, I think, just peeling away the layers. That's what I help my clients do too. Just peel away the layers till the, 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 the shiny gold nugget is, is revealed. <laughs> Oh, I love that so much. Thank you. And I appreciate that you shared that it's it's all a process. It's not a one and done. It's yeah. not, a, oh, I just decided this today and everything like magically gets fixed. You know, it's like that, as you said, it's always a continuous journey, but there's so many layers. But what's nice and what you're sharing is every time you take that one step, it clears and allows like the next layer, but it's, it's almost like we have all these tools in our toolbox, right? Mm -hmm. And you're like, okay, what, what are the tools that I can use when you have the awareness, then you start to look at it like, wow, okay, I know something's coming up, what am I going to do here, you know, you get to understand that you have a choice. Yes. in how things happen. And I think that's such an important thing because I think and all of us, I can say this for myself that we've had experiences where we would have perceived it as being a victim as this is happening to me. And I think a lot of times that is where we get stuck, right? Because now we're just completely locked in to that particular mm -hmm. thing. So all, all we're going to get, all we're going to get is more confirmation of that exact thing. Yeah. Abraham, I remember joked about, they said, you can use the law of attraction to prove that there's no law of attraction. <laughs> if you create your own reality, you can create any reality and you do create your own reality. It's just, as you said, it's not really obvious. But so one of the interesting things, there was something about the, oh yes, the idea that um, where some, when people first hear about the law of attraction and then they have their own experiences, if they don't know enough about it, and, and the irony of course is that it's the simplest system on the planet, just do what feels good, period, <laughs> right? But all this other stuff we were taught counteracts it and then we got proof that it doesn't work. So it's going back to the truth, but they'll say, oh yeah, you guys are, you just say, oh, think happy thoughts and everything's going to be fine. And then of course they dismiss it at that point. And it's true. That does not work when you're down at the bottom of the emotional scale. And the reason is because the law of attraction tends to hold you where you are because it's constantly reflecting the frequency you're already sending out. So if you're down there in despair, unworthiness, powerlessness, and somebody comes along and says, you know, just think a happy thought. Think, oh, why don't you just go die? <laughs> I, don't, I can't do that. And, and instinctively, you can't. And so this is where there's a lot, again, one of the areas there's a lot of coaching that I do. And the, people have a lot of resistance to that. You got to, and, I, and I, if I could, I might put up the emotional scale at some point to, as a reference. I'll need you to uh, allow me to, uh, to share my screen. Ooh, we're going to get fancy now. I'm like, let's see if I can figure this out. So, how so do go I to your, if you go to the share screen button down at the bottom, yeah. the green button, then there's a little arrow next to it. Ah. And there's sync that says multiple people can share. Yeah, just click yes. on that. Okay. I did. You ready? Yes. Let's do it. All right. Let's pull up the emotional scale. Here we go. Ooh, yes. Oh, I love this. <laughs> yes. So I, this comes from a workshop we did a while back. And so when you're down here at the, this bottom here, you know, this is the worst place feeling wise to be. And I've been here a lot of my life, so I can totally sympathize. Somebody says, oh, just go up here to joy. You know, it's not, that's not, that's not going to happen because you're being sort of held in place. You're being all these reflections that prove how powerless you are, are coming at you, people and experiences, and pain in the body. And you can't do that. But what you can do is you can make a few notches up from there. And this area of uh, anger, revenge, hatred, blame, uh, rage, like this whole area then is the next step up okay. on that topic. Every topic, we're someplace on this scale. Anything that's important to us, or wherever we put our focus, we are someplace on the scale based on the thoughts we're chronically thinking about that topic. And so if we are down at the bottom, the next step up is get angry, get really angry. Now, caveat, first and most important caveat, you do this by yourself. 
<laughs> this isn't about driving down the freeway and somebody cuts you off and then you you engage revenge to get them back and then you you know so if you engage another engage another person they're going to be on the same frequency so if you're engaging in revenge you're going to get revenge back but if you're doing this in private and we recommend i've got a punching bag and gloves and baseball bats and cardboard boxes in the basement and, and clients who come over here or used to you know we would go through that and i bought it for myself so that i could practice getting this emotion moving from the the very bottom up into that area where you start to get relief which is that big old green arrow on the left right it doesn't even matter where you are if you can roughly identify where you are you, your job is to just lean upwards into whatever area but but there's so much judgment around anger around revenge and hatred and rage they're like the negative emotions the bad emotions you should never experience those or express them and what the person is saying i don't want them around me so you just keep that stuff to yourself which is fine which is what you're supposed to do but so we're judged about it they're inappropriate they're childish no they're not they're life-giving and and you'll die literally your body is going to die if you can't get the, these out of your system because cancer is down there in despair you know and brain tumors are down there in powerlessness and unworthiness and insecurity you know and all the diseases that have manifested in the body are a result of those extremely low vibrations and so the 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 answer to movement is always going up into that next cluster now this is something i coach people through so it can be very helpful to have somebody who understands how this works and can help people well, I can I can vibrationally tune in and feel when they're starting to slip back down or they're not facing it and then we can have a conversation around it or sometimes I kind of push them into it a little bit like it's okay you know tell me what you think about your mom all the things she did to you what let's let's have let's get it out what do you want to say to her pretend like I'm her just say it just go ahead and say it. I just actually did this a couple of days ago with somebody and and it, and suddenly that layer was gone because she was she was able to move into that that anger and she quickly then was able to go up the scale so this is this is vital to being able to move out of this this is not looking for anger when it doesn't exist this is being down below anger and allowing it to come up as a natural part of the process right so does that all kind of make sense yeah wow so amazing um and just for those people who are not going to be able to see the visual you will be able to go to youtube and i will try to take like a screen grab and post it maybe on my instagram so you can see it but this is also something that is available online like you can find this emotional scale in a lot of places uh but yeah this is super helpful i mean i feel like we're getting a a mini coaching class with Kevin right now. This is amazing. And I do want to uh, thank you. And I do want to um, be sure I credit. Uh, this comes from Abraham Hicks publications. This was channeled by Esther Hicks in the book, Ask and It Is Given back in uh, 2004, I think, or 2005. It's a great, great book. Well worth buying. It's got 22 processes to help you move up this emotional scale on all different topics, money and relationships and health and so forth. And the scale is published in that. And we actually ran into Jerry and Esther Hicks in a restaurant in Chicago when we were going to an Abraham workshop a few years later and showed them our little emotional scale card. We actually have these things you know, printed out on these little cards as well. And uh, and asked Jerry, and he said, yeah, you know, I put, we got the credit on the back. It says, you know, where we got it from. And he said, oh, yeah, you can you can do that. So we got permission to actually to use these in our presentations and i can send you uh screenshots or captures of this in different forms if you want but it's very helpful to to look at it so you can get that confirmation back of where i'm at and where i need to go to move through things wow absolutely love that oh my god thank you so much kevin that was amazing yeah my pleasure so Oh my gosh, I love that. Yes, and actually I will. I would love to get a little photo because then I can post it for people so they can take a look at it. And who knows, make your own little job aid and keep it around, you know, keep it handy for yourself. It's a great step to start. Now, you know, I do want to remind people that, you know, Kevin does this professionally as yeah. well. So all of his information will be in the bio section. Um, if you kind of love how he explained things, his energy, you know, he's a great person to 
connect with. Um, I, of course, fully endorse him, which is why he's here. But um, <laughs> it's just it's an option. So, of course, all of that will be in the bio section. But that was amazing. And um, I know I've seen that skill and I don't remember the name. David something like he has something and it's got like a pyramid shape. It's got a oh, similar yeah. feel to that. So I'll have to look that up and add that in the link as well uh, if people want to look it up, because I know there's probably different versions. There are a lot of people who, well, because it's innate, yes. it's built into us. And you, and one thing I do remind people of is that the words that are on the scale um, are just the words that Abraham channeled through Esther. And those are Esther's words, her description of the feeling of those emotions. So you might use be using different words for the emotions. All that matters really is that you're in a place and you look for thoughts that will feel better and you get relief and move up. So you get to choose the words, but relief is what you're looking for. That's really the ultimate goal. I love that. I mean, this has been so amazing, Kevin. The one thing I did want to ask, because I personally have not done a lot of Abraham Hicks law of attraction. You know, I've been through my own process and I pick up pieces from everywhere and then I kind of just make my own thing. It seems to be working, but hey, you never know. I'll be like, Kevin, I'm going to book a call with you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here for you, Vanita. Thank you. So I did want to ask something only because I was feeling like, you know, there is this thing about, you know, how do you shift from one thing to the other? Because one thing that I'm very careful about is toxic positivity. Mm -hmm. So I would love your perspective on how that kind of like ties in or doesn't tie in with what we were just talking about. Well, maybe you could give me a little bit more about what that means to you. Um, so for me, it's when people will say, oh, just feel better. You can feel better. Just tell yourself you'll feel better. What, you know, you don't need someone to like show you or whatever. You just go with the flow. It's like, just change it. I'm like, but I'm feeling angry right now. Nah, just don't feel angry. There you go. Feel happy. So be happy. Yeah, go back and numb this emotion because you're really bothering me by going down there. So cut, cut it out so I can feel better is what they're saying. They haven't taken responsibility for their own vibration or they wouldn't even be having that conversation. They have this artificial, like, I'm happy, don't look over here and look under the covers because I'm really not very happy. But now you're over here and not having a good time and you're in my space and you're reflecting back to me that I don't feel so good, but I don't want to admit that. So you're the problem. Now you just get happy so I don't have to look at myself. Yeah, I definitely feel that. And I feel that there's a lot of pressure on people to how you were saying that their words that are like anger is meant to be painted so negatively that people are like, well, I don't want to tell people I'm angry because then they're going to think X, Y, Z. When but that's the point. Yeah. But that was what I was saying earlier. You don't do this around other people. Yeah. Right? You can be angry, but if you're feeling, if you're feeling those lower frequencies, the to me, the best thing to do, if you can, in the situation, is get out of the situation. Because otherwise, you're being influenced by the reflections of your anger or your, your powerlessness or whatever it is. And that is, is harder than to get back within and then identify where you're, you're at and move through that anger and, uh, and allow it. Because all this person in, the, in that case is, is basically saying is, you're, you're making me feel bad. You, you numb your emotions or just get happy, which we know isn't possible because it's too far of a jump. And so what does that person who's angry, angry do? They, they drop down to powerlessness because they can't move up. This person saying, do something that's impossible to do so that I feel better. And there's like, but I can't, and, but I got to make you happy. Ah, I'm powerless. And so they drop back down, they shut up. And that makes this other person happy for the moment. Not really happy, but get, provide some relief from having to look at themselves who are also dealing with this powerless energy. So you're yeah. the one creating your reality. You have the choice of how you feel. And what somebody else says is a reflection of how they feel about themselves, pasted on you to try to get you to change. Your job is to not do that, not to change, not to respond. You can, in, if you're angry, you can go someplace and get angry and move up through the anger yourself on your own speed, at your own time, in your own way. And then empowerment, which is number one at the top of the scale, is inevitable because you're doing it. Yes, I else. love that. I love that, you know, and this brings it back full circle, which I absolutely love, which is at the end of the day, it's such a personal thing, our journey. And as we start to peel the layers, what we realize is we are the ones that are going through it. 
we're the ones that have a choice. We're the ones that have the awareness. We're the ones that can make the difference for ourselves. So yeah. the more we realize to just focus on doing our own work and not getting distracted by all the other things yeah. that are around us, very easily available for distraction. Yeah, yeah, it's very <laughs> and easy. It's very easy. And, you know, the other thing also is to, it's okay to ask for help. You know, these, this is some stuff that is deep. It's been with us for years and it takes time. And that's why I love to have people like you come on that can say, yes, I've been through my own journey. Believe me, I've been in your shoes or something close to it. And this is how I navigate it. And this is what I do now. And there are options out there for people um, to, uh, choose to get some help. Of course, yes. there's a lot that you can do yourself, but there is a point where it's really, really helpful to get an external perspective that's kind of neutral that can help you because it's sometimes very hard to get to things that are so close to us. It's very challenging to yes. do it ourselves. Yes, brilliantly stated. There's no shame in asking for help. We, we have a we have an entire non-physical team that's just sitting there idly waiting, watching. At just waiting for us to ask to, to to surrender the what we're hanging on to and just ask religions have always preached this just pray to god but you have to pray to god in 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 a way that releases your tension on the negative experience or you're you're not sending out god being you know universal energy if you want to call it that it's, it's still all frequency so i i love that you you said that and there's help everywhere we'll get help if, if we just acknowledge that that we can get help and then we allow ourselves to feel that that creates the vibration of help starting to show up and then the right help that matches your frequency will show up always it's, it's happened to me hundreds of times I've, I've had hundreds of channeling sessions and coaching sessions and healing sessions over the last 15 years and just when i'm starting to dip down i finally realize okay i've been down here long enough uh, okay, just let it go, and let's. And then suddenly, somebody shows up on my doorstep, or from Facebook, or you know, I don't orchestrate any of it anymore. I don't even know what I'm doing. You know, tomorrow, it's like I don't think beyond the now moment because all my power is here, and everything happens here. When I stay here, then the universe just seems to take care of me. That works for everybody. Oh, I love that. I love that. All the power is in the now moment and yeah. couldn't have had a more truer statement. And as you said, I think one of the things that I love the most about this conversation is there are things that are very simple, but part of it is we've come to have this human experience and we've come to experience all of these things, whether it's like the contrast or, you know, being at the top of the scale, somewhere in the middle of the scale. And it's this crazy, flowy, amazing journey. And um, I think the more we're able to have the awareness of all these different pieces of us, you know, like I look at it like we're this, you know, like a diamond and there's so many facets, right? It's all part of the whole experience. Uh, but the more we're able to kind of get into some of those pieces, it's almost like the shine can get brighter because, you know, it's always been there, but it's almost like there was like, little dust and stuff on it and so we're like let's go clean up some areas and yeah <laughs> yeah and, that, and not because we got it's it there's anything wrong with it being dusty yeah. but because it feels good yes i love that that's what we're that's what we're looking at feeling good doing things that bring you joy and i think you know, that's been such an important piece of my own journey that I try to remind myself, you know, sometimes I'll be trying to do something and I feel like I'm getting bogged down and I'm like, oh my goodness, I think I just took all the joy out of this situation. And then I'll get up and just dance around for like a minute and then come back because I just raised Beautiful. my vibration and frequency. Yeah. I'm like, okay, fresh perspective. I'm in a different energy. Now I'm going to come back to this thing that I was not feeling so great about doing. Yes. Yes. One of my, my early law of attraction clients, I met at a, uh, an, um, Abraham cruise, what they called the land cruise. And like, it was like about 10 years ago and she was in a really bad place, sleeping on the floor of her little office. She didn't have a home and things were really bad, but she could make it to the, this. And we, we, of course we came right together over the course of so much coaching time together. <clears throat> she completely eliminated her debt. It's like a hundred thousand dollars of debt or something and had a three hundred thousand dollar amazon business running she was a 
beautiful entrepreneur. And what she told me in the later days, as, as we kind of wrapped up our coaching, because coaching is not meant to be a lifetime thing. It's like each task. And then I'm, my job is to work myself out of a job. <laughs> and so what she's, what she said was, you know what, Kevin, the biggest secret I, I've, I've discovered in all this is I don't do effort. If anything feels like effort at all, I just don't do it. I just don't do it. I know the universe is either going to line it up for me or that's not the thing for me to do right now. There's another path that I haven't seen yet, but I will not do effort. And I've always taken that to heart. And I remind myself to what you just said. If I'm starting to push a little too hard on something, and I still sometimes will spin down, you know, the old, there's still old habits up there that are ready to be released. But at some point, it's like, okay, <laughs> I'm just beating myself up with the stick, you know? <laughs> the law of attraction will not let up until I let up. And so then I remember to let up. I love that example. I love that. That's so amazing. Yeah, I, this has been such an amazing conversation, Kevin. I've enjoyed it so much. I feel like we could just keep on talking about so many other concepts, yeah. but maybe there we'll have to do a part two. <laughs> I'm here. And have you come back. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I know that, you know, I've come to that part of the segment where usually I have someone, you know, people come in and they, you know, they want to do cards, they want to channel, they want to do different things. I mean, I'll be honest, I feel like you've shared a lot of coaching things. If there is anything you would like to share with our audience, whether it's tips or anything else, we're certainly very open to it, but it's really whatever sure. brings you joy in the moment. Yeah, there are a couple of things that I, I often repeat to clients when I'm when we're in session, particularly if they've had a big healing moment and they're kind of like worn out from having released so much. <clears throat> so there's a couple things. So one of the things that I found is really helpful to interrupt these patterns of thought is, and I, I came up with it for a workshop we did several years back. It's called Stop, Drop, and Flow. Taken from the Stop, Drop, and Roll of, you know, what is his name? The, the fire bear. I can't think of his name. Smoky. Yeah. Stop, drop and roll when you're on fire. But when you're when you're on fire vibrationally, you want to stop what you're doing. Just halt. Right. Drop what you're thinking, because that's the source of things. And then return to flow state. And you do that by coming back into presence, into the now moment. So you just give yourself a break from the momentum. It doesn't take long. And just as you as you're pointed out about, you, know, you can go dancing. Right. Or do something. So stop, drop and get back into flow. <clears throat> the second thing is reminder that your emotions are always guiding you. And if you can't feel it, don't do it yet. Wait until the feeling becomes, as Abraham calls it, that hell yes. till you get a positive. If you act in a negative experience or a negative perspective, you're going to have a negative experience reflected back. It's just how the law works. So it's okay to wait on decisions, even if they feel really big. Wait till you're you found that alignment, being up at the hop, the higher end of the emotional scale, and then start paying attention. And you'll start to close the loop. How I feel, what I'm thinking, and what's showing up, then all start to match. And you can start to when you have the awareness that they're matching. And when I change this frequency to move it higher, the reflection changes. Now you're now you're golden. And the last thing is remember that your body is your partner. Okay, we came on this journey because with this body for a reason, because it is our guidance system. So I say, honor your body. Remember to breathe deeply, regularly, drink lots of water. I always have tons of water with me. A little bit of sea salt or Himalayan salt can help. Move the body every so often, eat high energy foods and rest or meditate. So the healing process can occur. You do those things and now your body starts to become your partner. And it's a whole lot easier than to discern what you're doing and move through life with ease. Oh my gosh. I love it, Kevin. That was amazing. That's amazing. Oh my goodness. This session has been so packed with information. I know that even when I hit the replay, I might have to hit the replay a few times. There were so many beautiful nuggets in here for, mm, even for me. Um, and obviously I'm so excited for everyone that's going to be tuning into this episode to hear all these amazing gems and information and, um, like I said, all of Kevin's information will be in the bio section everywhere that this gets posted. So I'm really hoping that uh, people receive a lot of beautiful information that we've shared so that they can start to like see what comes up in their awareness just from listening to this and, you know, potentially looking at that emotional scale, even just tuning into these amazing tips that you offered at the end um, as things to like look to add into our lives uh, to nurture and to elevate us. So 
thank you again, Kevin. This was just amazing. Oh, thanks, my Vanita. Thanks for co-creating a beautiful experience today. It was beautiful. Thank you so much. And thank you everyone for tuning into this episode. And I can't wait to catch you all on the next episode.